Oh, I know that sound. It's time for the beer and news report. Hi, and welcome to the beer and news report. Cheers. Tonight, I'm drinking Animal by Fort Point Beer Company. It's an IPA, right? And I told you I don't like IPAs. They're bitter. But I'm trying to show a point. This is a trick for all you lager drinkers out there. This one's actually not too bad for an IPA. It doesn't really have that really strong, bitter aftertaste. So normally I could drink this one, probably no problem. But I brought my big glass out. And what I want to show you is there's a trick. <laughs> so what I do is I take an, a light beer. And this is Michelob Ultra, right? So this is one of the lightest of the light beers. And what I use it for is to cut the the beer so what i do is i take an ipa which is hard for me to drink and i cut it with a light beer and what this does the light beer still has a beer flavor to it even though it's compared to an ipa it's very minimal but it cuts the ipa so that it's more manageable the flavor i can handle better so now you know, I have a full beer. And this is going to be a, a two-show beer. So I'm going to drink half for one show and then the other half for the second show. This is Michelob Ultra Light and Animal by Fort Point Brewing Company. Cheers. Okay. That is a beer I can handle. So that's a little trick I do. Whenever I go to a party and they have like a keg of beer and it, it's an IPA, Hopefully it's not a, like a double IPA or, or a triple or quadruple or whatever IPAs they have. I always bring like a 12 pack of some ultralight. Like you got Michelob, you got Miller like 55. There's a number of really, really light beers. And you bring them and what you do is you get your solo cup. You fill it half full with what's ever on tap. And then you pour one of your beers in there to cut it. And for me, that's how I manage getting around an IPA. little trick for you. Okay, so let's get on with the show. So the elections are over. We have a new president. And if you remember from the debates, President Trump warned us that if, at the time Vice President Biden gets elected, he's going to approve the Green New Deal. And he made it sound like it was a bad thing. So what is this Green New Deal? Well, that's going to be the topic of today's show. I'm going to briefly explain what the Green New Deal is and then go and expand on one point of it. And that's going to be solar power. Well, sit back, grab a beer, and let's start the show. Cheers. Now, if you remember when Trump first became president, he was pushing coal as the energy of the future. And he said during the campaign that he promised he was going to bring back jobs to the coal workers. Now that he's president, he has to, at least he has to try to keep his promise, right? So he's touting the promise of clean coal as an energy source. Here's a little clip. Coal is coming back. Clean coal is coming back. Hundred percent. But Donald Trump loves clean coal. I love clean coal. Obama has decimated the coal industry. Decimated it. And we're going to bring the coal industry back, folks. We're going to bring it back. Now, if you ask any emission scientists, they'll tell you that even clean coal is dirtier than any other fossil fuel out there, except, of course, dirty coal. <laughs> So obviously, President Trump was using coal to get votes. I don't believe he was basing the future of the U.S. energy program on coal. Now, fast forward to the debates, and President Trump pressed Vice President Biden on his energy policy, warning Biden that he was going to put in place the Green New Deal. Now, briefly, the Green New Deal is an energy policy put forward by Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Senator Ed Mark. You can easily Google this and download the whole bill. It's about 14 pages long. The bill tries to get the U.S. on track to reduce emissions and hopefully revert the global warming trend. It's basically a 10-year mobilization project, although 10 years is pretty aggressive. You'll see that history is against such a fast pace. But the Green New Deal sets the transition from fossil fuels to green energy in all areas, including transportation, buildings, energy production, even farming, just to name a few. While most Democrats supported this bill, most Republicans did not. So it didn't pass the Senate. Here's something for you trivia lovers out there. The Green New Deal was named after a bill that 
President Roosevelt set up called the New Deal. Getting back to the debates, President Trump is warning the public, saying that if Vice President Biden gets elected, he will install the Green New Deal and ruin the oil industry. Here, check this out. We have that's one maybe final the biggest question. statement in terms of business. That's the biggest statement. Okay. Because basically what he's saying question, is he is Mr. going President. to destroy the oil industry. Aha! President Trump said the oil industry, not the coal industry. Although the Green New Deal would destroy that too. But I want to point out that President Trump is really for the oil industry. And, and that makes sense. You know, clean coal is just for boats, which is fine. Politicians do that all the time. It's nothing new. Now, before I go into the Green New Deal and President-elect Biden's stance on it, I want to talk about the oil industry and why President Trump would support it. But first, I need a drink. Cheers. If you want to really understand the oil industry and why it's so important and why the U.S. would go to war over oil, you should read the book called The Prize by Daniel Yergin. It also was made into a miniseries by PBS that lasts about seven hours. It's really good. I've watched it several times. What it basically says is that oil is so integrated into our society that we can't live without it. Now, it used to be that since the oil was all sucked out of the U.S. states, we have to go to other countries like Saudi Arabia and get more. And then in 1998, we discovered fracking. And 10 years after that, the U.S. had another oil boom. As of 2018, we became oil independent, which means we produce more oil than we use. So President Trump can say that the U.S. became oil independent under his administration. Good job, Mr. President. Cheers. Now, one of the side products of fracking is natural gas. Lots of it. We have produced so much natural gas that the price of it has tanked. So what effect does that have? Well, take a power company. They now see how low the price of natural gas has gone. And, and when you're thinking of which energy source to use to produce electricity, you're going to start going with the low one, right? So they started converting their old power plants that were using coal to natural gas. And if they were going to build a new one, it wasn't going to be for coal. It was going to be producing electricity from natural gas. Let me show you a chart. And you can see from this chart that since 1960, coal usage has pretty much remained somewhat steady at above 50% of our energy production. Now fracking has started in 1998. And around 2005, natural gas, the prices had tanked, so it started to kick in. And that's when it broke below 50%. And it has been dropping ever since. As you can see, we are now at the lowest point in decades, below 35%. And you can expect this trend to continue as the U.S. continues fracking and new sources of natural gas are discovered. I don't know if coal will completely go away, but at this rate, coal has about 20 years left of life in it. But that's what happens, right? When one energy source becomes economically more competitive, the ex more expensive energy source gets transitioned out. And here's to reaching our goals. Cheers. Okay, fast forward to after the election, and it's time to talk about President-elect Biden's energy policy. Now, let's be reasonable. Just because President Trump says President-elect Biden is going to institute the Green New Deal doesn't actually mean he's going to do it. Do we even need President-elect Biden to pass the Green New Deal? Remember, when one energy source becomes competitive to another one, businesses and energy markets, they'll automatically shift to the cheaper energy source. You can see from this chart how the different energy sources rate in terms of cost. Nuclear has gotten more expensive. Coal, that price hasn't changed that much. Natural gas was the cheapest, but now solar and wind are the cheapest. So that's why natural gas has been replacing coal over the past 10 years. Now that green energies have recently become cheaper than natural gas, Expect the same thing to happen to natural gas over the next 10 or 20 years. These are humongous systems, and it's going to take that long of a time to convert them all. Now, I need to pause for a moment because green energy is a very, very broad industry. In this show, I'm only going to talk about the solar energy aspect of green technologies. But just know that almost all green energies are becoming more and more competitive. So what has President-elect Biden proposed? He wants to push for more green energy projects and expand on this technology, which he believes will eventually overtake the oil industry. Well, how long will this take? 
Well, let's look at how long coal and oil have been working together. Coal came before oil, so when did oil first appear? Well, the first oil well was drilled by Edwin Drake in 1859 in Pennsylvania. So oil and coal have been working together for over 150 years. When did solar power start? Well, the first solar cell was made in 1954, but it wasn't until 1958 that a solar panel was made. Whose house did it power? No one's. The first solar panel was used to power satellites. It wasn't until 1979 that President Carter installed solar panels on the White House, only to be taken down in 1981 by President Reagan, but then put back up again by President Obama in 2010. All right, the White House has solar power. Cheers. You see, the problem with new technology is that it takes time for it to get to a point where it is accepted by the majority of the people. I believe we're at this tipping point. If you want to fully understand what a tipping point is, I highly recommend you read this excellent book called The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Okay, let's get back to the show. Prices for solar energy have come down dramatically to where it is more competitive with fossil fuels. Now, you may say that's because the government gives rebates to solar power. That's true, but they also give money to the fossil fuel industry. So let's call it even. Although, for the record, I believe the fossil fuel industry gets way more money than the green power industry. So is that it? Are we going to see a chart like oil versus coal, but now it's solar versus oil? Is solar going to replace oil? Not if we're only talking about solar panels. You see, the key to true solar power is to have battery storage system with it. Because a true power system has to work both day and night. If you only have solar panels, then your power system only works in the daytime. You need storage systems for it to work at night. Now, I'm not going to go into the history of batteries, but I think we can all agree that lithium-ion batteries are the most popular ones now. They're in our laptops, they're in our cell phones, they're even in our electric cars. There are even home battery storage systems made of lithium-ion batteries. But is that the best choice? Okay, lithium is a very light metal, which is great for portable devices. Again, for phones, computers, cars. But I think there's a better battery for home power storage that's coming to the market. What is it? Well, let's have a drink and talk about it. Cheers. The new battery technology that I think will become standard for home power storage is a liquid electrolyte battery. What is that? This is a diagram of a liquid electrolyte battery. On the left side, you have a tank of liquid where the electrons leave. It's called the analyte tank. On the right side, you have a tank of liquid where the electrons enter. It's called the catholyte tank. And on top is the electronic device you want to power, which could be a light bulb, your computer, maybe recharging your electric car, or even powering your house. The great thing about this battery is they can be as big as you want because they're just going to sit in your garage, powering whatever you want to power, and then recharging the next day with your solar panels. Pretty cool technology, don't you think? Cheers. With home storage, we don't care about the size or weight. We want a battery that will last long and doesn't break down. A liquid battery won't blow up or catch fire like lithium ion. If the battery starts losing its charging capacity, just change out the electrolytic fluid. It's just like changing the oil in your car, although they'd have to come to your house. Right now, the liquid batteries have dropped in price to start being competitive with lithium ion storage systems. I predict a company that is currently using lithium ion batteries for their power storage, such as Tesla, will buy a flow battery company to incorporate this technology into their products. They will still use lithium ion batteries for their cars, but the flow batteries for home and industry power storage systems, that is what's going to be the paradigm shift in our energy policy. By combining solar with battery storage, you can have power both day and night. And this is when green energy starts to have a major effect on our energy systems. Why do battery storage systems have such a big effect on our power systems? What's the difference does it make? That's going to be the topic for my next week's show because my beer is almost done. And remember, I'm only drinking half of it and then the other half. I'm going to do this right after this show. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you clicked the like button. If you did or you want to know more about this, please contact me. You can reach me at this email address. Of course, if you want to get notified of a new show, click the subscribe button and then click the bell icon next to it. This will notify you when a new show has been posted. All right. Till then, keep your beer cold and your interest hot. Cheers.